Yes, hi, uh, welcome to another soil structure software video demonstration. This is the latest software we've just developed. It's called um, Anchored or Raised Shoring. And uh, you can see it here, soil structure, Anchored or Raised Shoring software. So I'm going to show you an example. Uh, this is an English uh, units example, and it's gonna be a tie back one level. Uh, we will do the analysis and then I'll show you a hand comparison or a comparison with a spreadsheet uh, Showing the results we're getting is very similar to what the spreadsheet is getting So if you go to under so basically we have three panes here. We have inputs, right? You get all the inputs here and then you have all the results that you could see and Then we have the diagram. So the first diagram is the cross-section that we're doing. It's a tie back wall the anchor is five feet from the top of shoring and then we have the, uh, the the pier diameter 24 inches with the i beam and it shows the clearance of 3.97 inches and then we have the earth pressure that we're using it's rectangular uh, then we have the guardrail design and finally we have the uh, subsurface settlement behind the shoring so with that, let's come back to the uh, problem at hand. So we have English units and we're using the apparent earth pressure method. You, if you click on this, you could also use user defined if you have the values from a soils report. But in this case, we're gonna use the apparent earth pressure method, which means we pick one of several soil conditions. The installation method will be drilled pier. It'll be a soldier beam an I-beam, the short height is 20 feet, the uh, pile spacing is eight feet and the pier diameter is two feet. Then we go to the earth pressure. <clears throat> and then you can see the loading height is 22 feet. That's because it's 1.1 times 20, it's 10% uh, based on uh, Tashibatariev method and Blum's method. You can refer to the uh, manual that comes with the software. Uh, for more information. Anyhow, uh, there is no vertical uniform surcharge, it's zero. The groundwater table is very deep, it's 39. So if you go over here, we have the excavation heights 20 feet, it will calculate the embedment, but there is the embedment is 12.2, so it's 32.2, but the water is 39 feet. So it doesn't show, it doesn't show in the diagram. And then we're using uh, 0.5 KSF uh, per foot and then times eight. So 0.5 because it's the I-beam is spaced eight foot on center. And then you have a, uh, the loading is four kips per foot. Okay. Uh, you can add strip load, a line load, a point load. We don't have any of that. And then we'll go to the structural data and uh, structural data says it's an I-beam. We're using W14 by 53, 29,000 KSI for E, uh, and then 50 KSI for F sub Y, 2.5 KSI for concrete compressive strength. Loads applied to the pile, we have zero point load or axial downward load, and then it will calculate the uh, vertical component of the tie back, it's 19.07, and uh, drill pier diameter is two feet. Drill pier embedment happens to be 12.2 feet. So we're using this uh, skin friction allowable of 0 0.6. You can change that. And then the end bearing, you can use zero or two or five or whatever you have the end bearing capacity. And then when we go to the anchors or bases, it's the short height, 20 feet times 1.1. So the loading height where the earth pressure would apply is 22 feet. We have a tie back at five feet from the top and it's angled 15 degrees. And if you click on this, it will show you that we're using a steel strand. We also have an option to use a threaded bar. Okay, but we're gonna stick with the steel strand. Embedment ratio, if you click on the question mark, it will show you that the embedment ratio should be 0.65H if it's less than 23 feet. And between 23 and 40 feet, it should be 0.55 H, H meaning the short height, right? 
and if it created the short height than 40 feet we can use 0.45 h and then we go to corner base if if we have a corner base we can add it but in this case we don't have we don't need it uh, whaler design we do have one whaler and we have a b c and the length and the a is the left side tributary it's halfway to the next tie back it's six feet and b is the distance between the two tie bags it's 12 feet oh sorry between the uh, anchors and then the left side uh, sorry the right side is also six feet so it's six left 12 in the middle and six on the right and we chose here a w 16 by 57 50 ksi okay if you want you can use a two channel section if you want and click on that then you go to bond length okay so with the bond length uh it's user defined and we said it's 2.5 kips per foot basal heave if you had clay at the base of the excavation so right right here if you have clay then you can choose this and say yeah i want to check my basal heave factor of safety but in this case we don't uh lagging design we use urchin factor 0.6 1200 psi for bending strength shear parallel to the grain f sub v 150 psi and for guardrail you can uh you can pick any of these three by three l shape so we picked the lowest one and we said it's eight foot on center okay so then now we check the results here is the anchored or braced results this is the loading and it says the tie back is at five foot depth and the tension is 58.9 kips unbonded length is 15 feet and the test load is the 1.33 or 1.25 whatever you choose times the tie back so in this case it's 1.33 so it's 73.7 and it says we need three strands grade 270 ksi okay uh here is the statics check lateral torsional buckling check we're using 72 percent of the capacity this is the shear maximum shear 36.9 the maximum moment 120.6 kip foot and maximum deflection it's 0.38 okay and it will also do the check on the whaler design the whaler length and you can click on it and see the graphs so this is the shear on the whaler this is the moment on the whaler and this is the deflection on the whaler bond length it will tell you what the bond length is it's 29.47 and that's based on the 2.5 kips per foot so it takes the test load and then it divides by the allowable bond uh, bond uh, strength of 2.5 kips per foot and you get 29.5 feet uh, allowable load this is uh, 55.4 and then when we said here on the loads applied to the pile it is 19.1 that's the vertical component of the horizontal uh, tie back force is 19.1 allowable is 55 so it shows it's green it's it's good lag in design it checks the calculations and then it gives you a 3 by 12 pressure treated lagging and here is the guardrail design so you can see the cross section it's 20 feet 5 feet from the top is a whaler with a tie back the 15 foot there is no uh, tie back and then it says the computed distance of embedment is 12.2 feet you can see the pile okay the pier is 24 inches with the i beam then you can see the earth pressure that was used right it's 500 uh, pounds per foot and then the guardrail dimensions it will show you and the ground surface settlement behind shore so the maximum settlement is only 0.12 inches and it goes up to two times the short height so if the short height is in this case 20 feet it will show you up to 40 feet okay and then we i can show you the uh, here is the verification 
okay uh, tie back wall verification and uh, here is the loading active pressure it's four caps per foot from 0 to 22 here is the loading diagram and here is the reaction 56.9 so if you want to see here it is maximum shear from the software 36.9 from the spreadsheet it's 36.9 Maximum moment 120.6, it's 120.58 from the spreadsheet. Maximum deflection 0.38, it's 0.38 on the spreadsheet. And the reactions, we have 56.9, but we were able to calculate a little higher, 58.9, but it's close enough. Okay, and uh, so if you want more, you have to go to soilstructure.com. So let me uh, show you that. So it's right there. You go to soilstructure.com and you can download anchored or braced shorten software. Thank you.